It has been far too long since the last Star Wars movie, but now that we are going to get some very soon, what's the plan here? I have a theory. Welcome to Star Wars Uplink. We know that the Mandalorian and Grogu movie is going to be the first one. It's taking the slot that the new Rey movie was going to have in 2026, and it's going to be the Mandalorian movie. And apparently this was kicked off uh, around the time of Star Wars Celebration in London. After the fan reactions to The Mandalorian Season 3 and all the information, they're like, hmm... I think we have an idea for a Star Wars movie that we can quickly kick off here and take the popularity of The Mandalorian and bring that forward. It's gonna be perfect, right? Uh, and then we started thinking about that and we're like, okay, interesting. What does that mean for the first real Star Wars movie to be an extension of one of the TV shows? I think it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Like, obviously, Star Wars has survived through The Mandalorian, through things like Andor, Ahsoka, Book of Boba Fett even to an extent because that ended up being like Mandalorian season 2.5. So there's a lot of these things that are, are like, yeah, Totally. TV shows, that's Star Wars right now. So a good transition into the movies could be, hey, The Mandalorian and Grogu, they haven't had a movie, right? Time for them to get a movie. And it's something that we can control in-house. We already have the directors. We already have the writers. We have the producers. We can just do this. Jon Favreau, he's done tons of movies. Iron Man, one and two, boom. Elf, uh, a variety of other things like he is a proven director and then we get to the flip side of that coin I'd say the real Star Wars movies is when we get back to what is now the Skywalker saga So we had the official end of the Skywalker saga with Rise of Skywalker And now we're getting the continuation as Rey has taken up the name of Skywalker There is a new expectation and according to this new rumor Rey is going to actually show up in more than just that new Stephen Knight, Obeyed uh, Chinoy, directed Star Wars movie. That's going to be like the big kickoff here. And according to this new rumor, we're also getting Ray in the Sean Levy directed Star Wars movie. Apparently that's who he wants the focus to be. So in theory, we could see uh, multiple trilogies going on. I don't think they're going to ever announce another legit trilogy for a while because uh, they're scared for that commitment and they do have to plan out the entire trilogy. I think Disney and Lucasfilm right now mostly Disney side of things, they're very much motivated on big one-off movies that they know can be successes or have higher likelihood of success because they're so heavily focused right now on let's get the money in. We, we lost a billion dollars last year. Let's try to get as much of the surefire shots out of the way as we can. We can't totally back a trilogy right now because what if one of the movies doesn't do good? That could be bad. That's the idea that they're definitely going on with this. But I had the thought that it seems like they're going to make Rey the new Luke. I do think we're going to see more Luke in the Mandoverse and we're probably going to see him back in action in whatever the Mandalorian and Grogu movie sets up um, because... Dave Filoni's movie is going to be Thrawn focused and you're not going to have the most powerful, most influential setting up the Jedi Order, Jedi like Luke sit back and let Ahsoka do the whole thing. And I don't think Ahsoka, now that they have a working relationship with each other, will just go off on her own. I don't think we're going to see the Rebels season six or whatever be focused around them saving the galaxy. I think you have to have Luke there. I think you have to have Han Solo. I think you have to have Leia. You have to have all these different freaking pieces because they're in this galaxy. You can't pretend like they're not there. Like, what the heck are they doing if not helping the galaxy as a whole? Yes, Luke is an idiot and is like, oh, hey, you know the, the mistakes of the previous Jedi Order? Let's, let's replicate those. Yes, there is that side of things, but I don't think for for a second that they're gonna let Luke just sit back and watch as Thrawn, the new big bad in this galaxy, 
is taking over. I don't think that's going to happen, especially if his rumored title ends up being true of Heir to the Empire. The original Heir to the Empire movie was less focused on Thrawn than it was on Luke and Leia and Han. That was the next trilogy. That was the sequel trilogy before the sequel trilogy. It's the spawning of the Star Wars extended universe, so I think they have to do something there that ties into that history if they're going to borrow that name. But that's in the Mandoverse timeline. What about this whole Rey thing? I think that after the amount of time that we've had between The Rise of Skywalker and whatever the next Rey Star Wars movie is, more than likely the Stephen Knight, Charmaine Obeyed Chinoy directed Star Wars movie, that's more than likely going to be the first Rey movie that we get. I think that's going to kick off the next generation of Star Wars. We had the kind of flops. I mean, they, if you look at the numbers, they weren't flops, but the kind of cultural beginnings of the discourse angrily around Star Wars began with the sequel trilogy. I, I think if you look at that as like a little bit of a hiccup and then we go into this next phase, I think we're going to see what fans wanted to see more of with Luke Skywalker in Rey. I think we're going to see more of Rey in various pieces. It seems like whatever this next Star Wars movie is going to be, it originally wanted to put Rey in this support role, but that could be changing. It, it's rumored that she's making about 12.5 million from this movie. So it sounds like she might actually be in more of a, a main focus role in the next movie, whatever that ends up being. So maybe she is this next generation. Maybe we do finally see the next phase of a Jedi's life cycle because we haven't seen that really on screen. We skipped that whole time period with the sequel trilogy, uh, the original trilogy to the sequel trilogy. We just skipped that whole time period of like, what happens after you become a Jedi Knight? What happens? What What's your place in the galaxy? Why does every example seem to be going to make a new school to, to find and train these new people? What does it look like for what Rey found in those original books and the text of the Jedi Order? What did What happened there? How is that going to influence what she's going to uh, teach her students, if that's going to be the, the storyline that they go with? What does it look like for a character as powerful as Rey is, as successful in, in her attempts uh, against evil as she was, who, who is intrinsically tied to the dark side through her grandfather? What does it look like for that character to be in this new era? What does it look like for that to be the next kind of story that we get? Because it, honestly, outside of the extended universe and the books and legends, we have not seen that. We may not even see it in the Mandoverse, even though Luke is there. So I think it's a good opportunity for them to take Rey into a more meaningful direction, a, a more unique and, and powerful uh, emotionally role. Because I, I struggle to connect with Rey on a, an emotional like character development side of things. I think she had more potential as a character than they actually went with her. I feel like they, I feel like they made a lot of the mistakes that a lot of um, men in the space do with writing female characters or, or women characters. Um, that they, they just take the ideal male character and they make, make them female. That is a lot of what Ray is. And I don't think that's Daisy Ridley's issue at all. I think she did what she could with the role. And, and I, I feel like just the structure or the lack thereof of structure that they gave her character ended up with a lot of the, the, the struggles or the issues I have with the, the whole sequel trilogy. I think with someone as successful as Stephen Knight and Obey Chinoy here, I think they have a good opportunity to finally bring some of the heart and soul back to a character of someone that we can actually relate to and, and feel their struggle with. So I'm personally excited about it. We'll see where that goes, but let me know your thoughts on what would a ray in the space of Luke Skywalker be? Let me know in the comments below. As always, check out our podcast and may the force be with you.